This is how I color grade using three different workflows, without LUTs, with LUTs, and more recently, Cineprint 16. The first method is without using any LUTs. I do this when I have time to spare or when I have a certain look that I'm going for. Firstly, I shoot S-Log3, so the first step is to transform that into Rec 709 using the DaVinci Color Space Transform node. I then add the color corrector nodes before the color space transform. That's white balance, exposure, and contrast. I do this before because this is when it's still S-Log3, so we have as much information as possible. For white balance, I use the chromatic aberration node to adjust the temperature and tint. I use this effect instead of the offset sliders, as I feel this gives much more control and results in a more natural image. I first fix the white balance, I adjust in the tint and the temperature. And once that's good, I like my footage a little warm, so I push that slightly. And I find adjusting a tint slightly to green adds a cinematic look to it. For the exposure, I make sure to use the offset wheel to adjust the brightness. And for contrast, I don't really like contrast the images, so I only push that a little too. I then add the classic teal and orange look, so the shadows are teal and the highlights are orange. I then add halation to push some of the highlights for a dreamy cinematic look. And of course, a sprinkle of that little film grain going too. From here, I can then adjust the look depending on the mood that I'm going for or change some colors. But for this shot though, this is fine. The second method is using LUTs. I do this 90% of the time because I'm not a pro colorist and it just saves me so much time. Now step one is to apply the LUT. My favorite is Eterna from Phantom LUTs. And notice here that I don't use the color space transform tool because these LUTs were built for S-Log3. And that's one thing to know when using LUTs because some LUTs only work for certain type of footage. Anyway, with the LUTs applied, I then add the white balance, exposure and contrast before it. I then adjust the LUT strength depending on the strength I want using the key tab. And of course, I just plop the halation and the grain. As you can see, this was much faster than normal manual method, but then you don't get as much control or understanding with the grade itself. And this brings us to the final method. It's not magic, it's Cineprint 16. So this is what we call a power grade and I kind of see it as a color grading template. And in a way, I kind of see it as an advanced slot because you get all the nodes and all the color settings that you can play around with. The first step is to choose the right input gamma and color. So again, this is S-Log3. And then as usual, I adjust the white balance and the exposure. I then change it to use print film instead of Cineon and this is using DaVinci's default Kodak LUTs. As you can see, there's many different settings that we can play around with, and I normally turn off the blur and the sharpening and then adjust the grade a little bit. Now, I've used this for all my recent videos in order to get that film look fairly quickly. But honestly, I've barely touched the surface of it, and it may look quick with how I've done it, but if you really want to perfect that film look, this method may take much longer than using a lot. And that's pretty much it. Three quick explanations on how I color grade.